This week, we're going to be checking out one of the newest airbrushes from Harder and Steamback. This is the Ultra 2024. I've always been a fan of Harder and Steamback, so when they announced this airbrush, I ordered it immediately. I was really excited to see what they've been working on, and this airbrush does not disappoint. It's loaded with features for new painters and has an incredibly unique design. I ordered the Ultra 2024 directly from Harder and Steamback. I paid 99 US dollars for it, and it was shipped directly from Germany. It came packaged in this very nice plastic box. It's the standard one that you get with all Harder and Steamback airbrushes. In the box, the first thing that you see here is the spray test of your particular airbrush. There's a small gradient at the bottom to show how it atomizes the paint, and on top is a detail test showing just kind of like a squiggly line. But this airbrush can actually spray much better detail than this and much thinner lines, which I'll show later in this review. And besides that, the only thing in the box is the airbrush itself. They do include a quick adapter that you can see attached to the bottom of the airbrush here. Now I have a bunch of quick adapters, a lot of cheapo third party ones, and a few Iwata ones. But without a doubt, hands down, the Harder and Steamback quick adapter is the best one out there. I really need to order a bunch of these to swap out on all my other airbrushes. And these quick adapters are universal, so they'll connect to the female end of any other quick adapter. Here's one on a badger hose. It fits great. So what makes this airbrush so special? It's the first airbrush that I've ever seen that was engineered for beginners to help you start out and make the airbrush more approachable. Now painting with an airbrush is not difficult to do. It's actually pretty simple and easy and anybody can do it. Learning how to paint is a different thing altogether, but that's the same with any painting tool you're using, whether it's a paintbrush or an airbrush. But if you decide to use an airbrush as your painting tool of choice, the Ultra 2024 can help you along by taking some of the guesswork out of how far back you need to pull back on the trigger. Just behind the airbrush trigger is this collar that limits the distance that the needle can travel back. The farther that you pull back on an airbrush trigger, the more the needle retracts from the nozzle. So in other words, the more that you pull back, the more paint the airbrush is going to spray. So what this collar does is give you some preset trigger distances. It goes from fully open, just like a normal airbrush, to prime, to base, and then three other presets indicated by some Roman numerals. You may have noticed that the words on the collar, like prime and base, are designed for modelers and miniature painters. And that's clearly who this airbrush was designed for, people who paint models. Now that's not what I do. I come from an art background. I just happen to use an airbrush as my painting tool. But this is an airbrush for anybody. It's just a normal airbrush, a nice high quality one, it has some features designed for model and mini painters. And even though I don't paint models, you guys are awesome and I always appreciate you being here. The love and the dedication to airbrushes in the scale modeling and mini community is just second to none and I have nothing but respect for you guys. When you buy the Ultra, it comes equipped with a 0.45 millimeter needle and nozzle. This is the perfect size to start out with, a great size for pretty much everything in airbrush painting. You could spray plenty of detail, which we'll see later, and also it's going to be more forgiving for some thicker paints. This is an updated nozzle size by Harder and Steamback, and I think it was a great choice to include on this one. Another nice feature is that the Ultra comes with a paint cup that you're able to remove. When the cup is off the airbrush, you're able to add about four drops of paint into this opening, which is plenty for a lot of applications. And what I love about this is that it makes the Ultra feel like a side feed airbrush. And what's great about a side feed is that there's no cup on top to obstruct your view. So it makes it really easy to see whatever it is you're painting. And another nice thing is you just get a ton of room for your trigger finger. I usually paint with my finger pretty far up on the airbrush trigger. This just gives me a lot more control and a lot better grip. So when the cup is off the airbrush, this feels better than a side feed because not only do I have plenty of room and I'm able to see my artwork a lot clearer, there's also no cup sticking out of the side, which could make an airbrush feel a little bit lopsided. The only real negative thing that I found about this airbrush is that when the cup is on, it's just too large and too close to the trigger. When I paint with this with the cup on, it just feels way too cramped. The older Ultra model didn't have this problem. You can see here that there's a lot more space between the trigger and the cup. And unfortunately, you can't just swap out the cups because the opening where its compression fit is different between the two. But what's so nice about this larger opening is that it holds more paint. So you could paint with this airbrush with no cup on. It feels incredible to use and I think it was a great design. Plenty of other airbrushes come with larger cups like my much loved Iwata Revolution here. 
And this model just has a tiny bit more space in there, which makes a big difference and is a lot more comfortable. I think that Harder and Steambeck should just give the options for some smaller cups or maybe a cutout in this larger cup. Just anything to make it feel a bit less cramped. I think that would be very helpful. The cup itself holds 5 milliliters of paint, which is quite a bit. And there's no threads, it doesn't screw in, it's just held in by compression. If you're worried that the cup may fall out, if you knock it or tip the brush over, don't be, because this thing is solid. Once you install it on the airbrush, it's not going anywhere until you pull it back off. And that's a good segue into the best thing about Harder and Steambeck airbrushes. That's their build quality. The cup is held in so well because everything on this airbrush is precisely engineered and machined. No other brand on the planet makes an airbrush like Harder and Steambeck. Iwata Airbrushes, which is without a doubt my favorite brand, is pretty close, but I think Harder and Steambeck is in the number one spot for build quality. No corners were cut on this one, just like every other Harder and Steambeck, and honestly, there's not a single imperfection on this airbrush on the inside or the outside. Unlike the older Ultra model, which was nickel plated, this new one comes with a triple chrome coating. Chrome is just so strong, it's gonna last a lifetime, and it's just nice to see as a standard on this airbrush. And underneath the macro lens, the finishing just speaks for itself. As I said, there's not a single imperfection on this model, no nicks or scratches in the chrome, it's just a flawless chrome coating. The nozzle and the needle tip are also perfectly centered within the front of this air cap. That's important so that the airbrush sprays correctly, so this is just very nicely done. The trigger pad or the top part of this trigger where your finger rests is one of my favorite ones that I've ever used from Harder and Steambeck. It's just a really awesome design on this one. It's large, it gives you a lot of grip, and it's got a small cutout in the front. And a pretty cool addition for new painters is that you cannot pull back on this trigger unless you press down first. That's very important to build up some good airbrush painting techniques. You always want to press down first to get air before you pull back on the trigger. And the same thing goes in reverse. If you want to stop the paint, you first push the trigger all the way forward and then you release the air. That'll give you a lot better airbrush control and it helps a ton with tip dry. If you're just starting out with an airbrush, there's no real need to fully break down your airbrush, but I'm going to do it in this review just to show you all the internal parts. The first thing that I'll do here is pull off the compression fit cup and then I'll unscrew the rear handle. This collar is also held in by friction. To remove it, all you need to do is pull it off the back of the airbrush. To remove the needle, you just loosen up this chucking nut and then you can pull it out the back. And the chucking nut has a pretty nice design here too. It's nicely finished and tapered so that the needle always goes in the correct way. So I'll fully unscrew it to remove it from the airbrush and this area right here is the spring assembly system. To remove this, all I want to do is unscrew this nut, and once this is off, you'll notice that there's a spring and the needle chucking guide. You're able to pull these right out of the back of the airbrush, and that's the entire rear assembly. Very simple, easy to break down. These parts are just so nicely machined and manufactured. It's rare to see internal parts this nice from any other airbrush brand. Breaking down and cleaning your airbrush is something that you're eventually going to need to do, so it's just nice to see that this could not be easier. The trigger itself lifts right out of the airbrush and it's very similar to all other Harder and Steambeck designs. It has a small ball at the bottom of it to press down on the air piston and the trigger lever is also connected to the back of this. And the pad on top of this trigger is my favorite one that I've used so far from Harder and Steambeck. I really hope to see this one on future models as well. Moving along to the front of the airbrush, this is one of the easiest ones to take apart. All you need to do is unscrew this cap. And inside here is the nozzle itself. You want to be careful not to drop it when you unscrew the air cap. And what's nice about this nozzle is that it's self-centering. You don't have to screw it in. That nozzle cap will hold it in place. And a large nozzle like this just makes it so easy to clean if you get a clog in there, like maybe some dried paint gets in. All you need to do is unscrew this and then just kind of poke the clog out. To reinstall everything, it's just as easy as taking it apart. Just place this nozzle in and then screw the cap on. Everything on an airbrush should always be hand tight, so you don't need any tools to put it back together. When placing the trigger back in, make sure the cutout is pointed toward the front, toward the nozzle, and then just press it down in place, making sure that you feel it pressing on that spring within the air piston. Then just reinstall the guide in the back of the airbrush and then just place the spring right over it. And then all you need to do is take this nut here and screw everything down. On most airbrushes, you're able to adjust the trigger tension by how far down you tighten this. You don't really get that option on this one because the threads are kind of small. 
You can loosen it up a little bit on this one if you want a softer trigger, but honestly there's not that much room to work with, so I would just tighten this all the way down. And then just put on that guide, that chucking nut, and insert the needle. When you insert the needle, you don't want to use any pressure on it, you just want to insert it until you feel it make contact with the front of the nozzle. If you use some force and really kind of press it in, you could damage the nozzle. So just a very light amount of pressure until you feel it make contact with the front of the airbrush, and then it's set. And that's it, it's just one of the easiest airbrushes to break down and put back together. An airbrush that's easy to break down is really important for anyone who's painting with an airbrush, but I think that it's especially important for new painters, so if you're just starting out, I think you're going to appreciate this. A few weeks back I released a video of my top 10 airbrush recommendations for the new year and I was so impressed with the Ultra 24 that it was my number 5 airbrush and my number 1 Harder and Steenbeck. And I own a bunch of Harder and Steenbeck airbrushes but to date this is my favorite one so far. The reason that I love it so much is because of what you're seeing here. It has phenomenal trigger response. I love the Infinity and the Evolution, but the issue I have with those is that the trigger response was never that great. It was always a bit of a delay before it started painting. But on this model, the trigger response is instant. If you look at my trigger finger, you'll see that I'm barely pulling back on the trigger, just a tiny nudge back and I get paint. It seems to be spraying it at the same point every time. And that's very, very important. The trigger response rate and the consistency of that trigger is one of the most important parts of making an airbrush feel responsive. And Harder and Steenbeck absolutely stepped it up with this new model. The response rate to me feels very good. If you want to test the response rate on your own airbrush, I recommend trying out what I'm doing here. Write out a few letters and make sure that you're doing it in print where you're starting and stopping the airbrush over and over. And write them out small in between the margins of a legal pad or a piece of loose leaf. And you can see here that this was very easy for me to do with this airbrush. The response rate was there. When I started pulling back on the trigger, I got paint so I could start and stop a line exactly where I want. And for painting fine lines, this airbrush is excellent. To paint a fine line with any airbrush, it's just about reducing your paint, dropping your PSI, and most importantly, holding it very close to the surface that you're painting. And with the Ultra, I'm able to paint a line about as thin as a human hair. When I was painting this landscape a month ago or so, I was using my favorite detail airbrush, which is the Iwata Micron Takumi. But I knew that this review was coming up, so I switched over to the Ultra to test it out. I mainly used it on the left side of this painting, where I was adding in some rocks and some cliffs. I'm using a transparent paint here, using some shields and some freehand. And it just felt very comfortable to me. Not once during any part of the painting did I feel like I didn't have the control. And that's really one of the things that I look for most in an airbrush. I want the control to be there. And the Ultra was doing exactly what I wanted. You could see here I'm spraying the paint a bit heavier along this shield. When I pull back to a certain point, I'm getting the same amount of paint. It just feels very comfortable and responsive. And the nice thing about this larger nozzle size is that it just made it so much easier to spray some thicker paint. Throughout parts of this I was spraying paint right out of the bottle, no issues at all, it sprayed it and atomized it perfectly. That's what I'm doing here, I'm spraying in some yellow and some orange directly from the bottle, just glazing it over this area. So the trigger response rate is very good and the trigger feels very smooth. I will say this though, it's one of the heaviest triggers that I've ever used. There's a lot of tension in this spring and trigger design and because of that screw that I talked about before, you don't really have the option to loosen it like you can on most other airbrushes. So for me and the way I like to paint, this is like a dream setup. I love a lot of tension on the trigger. I've always been pretty heavy heavy handed with an airbrush, I have a pretty strong grip on it, and for my painting style, more tension gives me a lot more control, which is what I was getting in this airbrush. But I do worry about new painters or people that prefer a softer trigger, because this one is just a lot heavier than most other airbrush triggers. Again, I love the feel of this one, but it's kind of like the opposite of GSI Creos airbrushes. If you painted with any of their models like the PS771 or the 289, you'll know that they have a very, very soft trigger tension. I've never been a huge fan of very soft triggers, but Creos designs them that way, and many people prefer that. So just understand that if you're looking for a light trigger, this Ultra 2024 is definitely not the best option because like I said, it's one of the heaviest ones that I've ever used. But even though it's a heavy trigger and it has a lot of tension, it's still very, very smooth. So it feels comfortable to paint with. Before I finish this up, one last thing that I want to mention is that the trigger cap itself is a single piece. So you're not able to unscrew the front of it to get easy access to the needle tip. 
If you're just starting out, this is a good thing. You don't want to have that needle tip exposed because it's very easy to break an airbrush needle. But like all other Harder and Steenbeck airbrushes, you could swap out the nozzle and the nozzle cap to different sizes. So if you want, you could swap out the Infinity 0.15 cap and that on this or the larger 0.6. So you're never stuck with this single cap and the 0.45 you could buy new ones and swap it out whenever you'd like. So that's going to be it for this one. Honestly, it's a beautiful airbrush, one that I'm very happy to own. If you're just starting out and you want something to help you build up some muscle memory, this is a great option. I think that the engineers at Harder and Steenbeck came up with something very special with the Ultra 2024. If you're considering picking this one up, I highly recommend it. It's without a doubt one of the most unique airbrushes ever made. And if you want to start painting with an airbrush, this is a great place to start. So thank you for watching. I hope that this video was helpful for some of you who are considering buying this one. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you back here next week.